Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Science Cafe presented by the International Younger Chemists Network. My name is Tracy Lau, and I am a co-lead for the IYCN Conference Presence Committee. Today's topic will be on the sustainable production of ammonia, presented by our guest speaker, Dr. Yelinu Poyaga, who is an editorial advisor for the Journal of the Institute of Chemists, Papua New Guinea. She is currently based in Glasgow. Due to scheduling issues, this webinar will not contain a Q&A section. If you have any questions for the speaker, please leave a comment or email us at conferencepresence.iycn at gmail.com. The IYCN is an associated member of the IUPAC since 2017. Our vision is to connect and empower younger chemists around the world, and we hope to support and advocate for young scientists working across all chemical sciences towards a globally sustainable future. Membership is free and available on the website. To become a member, you need to meet one or more of the following requirements. If you are a chemist that is younger than 35 years, or you are currently doing a chemistry-related degree, or have completed a chemistry-related degree or training during the last five years. Please check our website or other social media to find out more about any upcoming events or opportunities. As mentioned earlier, our guest speaker is Dr. Yalinu Poyaga. She is a young chemist from Papua New Guinea, where she received a Bachelor of Science in Chemistry from the University of Papua New Guinea a Master of Science in Inorganic Chemistry with distinction from the Northeast Normal University in the People's Republic of China, and a PhD in Chemistry from the University of Glasgow in the United Kingdom. She has a strong research background and interest on sustainable green chemistry with a focus on global sustainability to help tackle some of the problems of climate change while providing food security for the world population. She has earned a total of 18 awards for scientific excellence, including three international awards, including first place in Scotland for the Society of Chemical Industry PhD student competition. Her work has been highlighted and featured by the American Chemical Society, Scottish Funding Council, Society of Chemical Industry, and QS top universities. At the end of 2019, she was selected by the University of Glasgow and honored as the 2020 University of Glasgow Future World Changer for her research in ammonia synthesis. She currently works as an editorial advisor for the Journal of the Institute of Chemists, Papua New Guinea, and as an academic in Glasgow, teaching undergraduate and master students in science and engineering. Hello everyone, my name is Dr. Yalinu Poya Gao and today I will be speaking to you all on the sustainable production of ammonia. Now, what is ammonia? Ammonia goes by the chemical formula of NH3. It is a colorless gas with a pungent smell that has a variety of uses. Ammonia is a compound of nitrogen and hydrogen and it can be made either naturally or industrially. Now, ammonia occurs naturally. Let's cover this area first in order to understand this presentation. Now, ammonia occurs naturally through the nitrogen cycle, of which you can see there is a nitrogen-fixing bacteria, um, also called a diazotrophs. Now, this is encompassed in a, what you call a enzyme called nitrogenase, which is a res the enzyme responsible for the reduction of nitrogen to ammonia. Now, ammonia's purpose is mainly to help um, soil grow food. Now, as you can see in the image that is just showing on the screen, this is an example of what you call fertile soil, which helps to grow food. However, as our world population is growing, what has happened is that we need to produce food more quicker in order to feed growing population. Now, of course, when there is less ammonia in the soil, uh, this along with any other essential nutrients, this causes food to take too long to grow. That is why we use natural, natural processes such as composting or even we apply natural things such as animal manure in order to condition our soils so they can grow food quicker. However, this takes too long because of course we eat food three times a day. This is where ammonia is being made industrially. Now, here you see pictures of two incredibly genius uh, scientists, Fritz Haber and Karl Bosch. Both these German scientists helped develop the Haber-Bosch process, which to this day is still known to be the greatest achievement in the 20th century for the production of ammonia. Now, these two scientists have come up with the Haber-Bosch process, and they have bought both one 
Nobel Prizes in accordance to the developments to this process. So Fritz Haber won the Nobel Prize in 1919 in chemistry, and Carl Bosch won the Nobel Prize in 1931 in chemistry because of their work towards developing the Haber-Bosch process at an industrial level. So what is the importance of ammonia? Ammonia is mainly being used to make fertilizers. Now, uh, there is 170 million tons of ammonia produced annually through the Haber-Bosch process. Now, a big bulk of this ammonia that is being produced, 85% of it is being used to make fertilizers. So from this ammonia produced from the Haber-Bosch process, this in turn is produced to make is used to make 450 million tons of fertilizers every year. Now, from this fertilizers, what happens is that it is applied to um, the soil to grow food, which in turn feeds 40% of the world's population. So you can see that ammonia is very important to mankind as we know it. So let's have a look at the Haber-Bosch process. So this Haber-Bosch process basically combines pure nitrogen and pure hydrogen gas over an iron catalyst at conditions of 400 to 500 degrees temperature and 100 to 300 atmospheric pressure, and this produces the amazing ammonia. Now, this process is an exothermic reaction, which means that it favors low temperature and high pressures. Now, the optimum conditions for to make a acceptable rate or suitable amount of ammonia is at 400 degrees and 100 to 200 atmospheres. Now, this process is an amazing process that has been feeding the world for over 100 years. However, there are some disadvantages. Now, of which if we improve this Haber-Bosch process, it will be a more environmentally friendly one. The first disadvantage is that the Haber-Bosch process produces more than 96% of the world's ammonia using fossil fuels as feedstock. And then this in turn, consumes one to two percent of the world energy so that's massive amounts of energy being consumed by one single industrial process now another disadvantage is that this process contributes 1.6 percent of man-made carbon emissions uh, carbon dioxide emissions annually which of course contributes to um, uh, drastic changes in the climate of which we are experiencing so there are four main solutions to make uh, the Haber-Bosch process or ammonia production, a more sustainable one. First is to use small-scale local ammonia production plants instead of those large-scale industrial ones, and that can be operated on a small farm, so farmers can use the ammonia that is produced by them locally and then use them to make fertilizers, which can be used to condition the soil in order to grow food. Another solution is to use sustainable energy sources such as wind instead of heavily depending on fossil fuels as feedstock. Another solution is to use hydrogen extracted from water using, um, uh, using electrolysis. And then you have a um, simpler plant, which is a economically beneficial and has more agility in terms of starting and stopping. So these are four approaches that we can look in terms of solutions that can improve the Haber-Bosch process. Now, I have a PhD in chemistry majoring in catalysis, and my focus is to use catalysts to solve some of these problems that are associated with ammonia production. So my aim is to make catalysts using cheap materials that cannot be poisoned, um, because if a catalyst is poisoned, then it is made inactive. So we want to have a catalyst that has a long life cycle and a catalyst that is able to produce ammonia in a clean way, uses lower temperature and pressure and uses lower energy. So in a sense, we're trying to cut back on the usage of the um, fossil fuels and looking at more alternative or more better alternative sources. And at the same time too, um, using energy sources from natural things such as uh, sunlight. Okay, so... My approach is to use supported catalysts. Now, I got this approach mainly through the commercial British Petroleum, or otherwise known as BP, the doubly promoted catalyst for ammonia synthesis. Now, this uh, catalyst has come into play and was has since been used since 1994. And this catalyst was developed by British Petroleum. Now, here you can see that this is a graphical abstract taken from a paper by Brown, Edmonds, Joya, and others. So this talks about how this catalyst came into play. So this catalyst is more 
functionable at small scale ammonia production rather than the large scale industrial um, ammonia production plants, which mainly use the iron catalyst. So this catalyst is a ruthenium based catalyst supported on carbon as a support, and it is mainly applied to small scale ammonia production. So that is where I got my inspiration from. And I'm looking to make supported catalysts for ammonia synthesis. So in this case, what happens is the catalyst is being applied onto uh, as a thin layer on the uh, support of choice, um, which of course it's um, has the advantage of having a high surface area, and which means that there are more active sites to produce more ammonia. There is thermal stability because as um, you might have seen in the previous slides. Ammonia uses high temperatures. And at the same time too, there is a dispersion of the catalytic phase. So of course we have to produce ammonia beautifully in a nicely supported catalyst. Now, of course, all this comes into play has to go in relation to what we are facing in the world today. Now, the 2020, 2030 United Nations Sustainable Development Goals was designed, and uh, designed by the United Nations and implements 17 goals specifically to make the world a better, more sustainable place for everyone. Now you have all these 17 goals. Now, if you look closely, or if you think back of all I've been talking about with ammonia, of course, ammonia plays a great role in modern society and is valuable. Therefore, it should coincide with these goals. Now, my research in ammonia synthesis can provide fresh perspective into addressing five of these goals, of which I would furthermore explain in the coming slides. Now, five of these goals that are being addressed, of course, they link directly with the other 12 goals as well. So, first of all, we have goal number one, no poverty, and goal number two, zero hunger. Now, as, as I mentioned before, the world population is constantly growing. Now, it is estimated that by the year 2050, the population will really reach 9.1 billion people. Now, food production will need to rise by 70% in order to keep up with global demand. Therefore, farmers will require more fertilizers to produce more food quickly to feed the world. And this, in turn, means that ammonia needs to be produced more as well. So this satisfies two of the first United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. Goal one, no poverty, and goal two, zero hunger. Now, in order to, of course, maintain food security, ammonia needs to be produced in enormous amounts. We've already established that. But as we also established, it consumes 1% to 2% of the world's energy and contributes to global warming by releasing 1.6% of man-made carbon dioxide into the atmosphere every year. Now, the Haber-Bosch process, of course, it uses a conventional iron catalyst, which is suitable for large-scale plants. However, I'm looking into going into small-scale plants, which are using different types of catalysts supported catalysts to produce ammonia in a clean way using less harsh reaction conditions and less energy. So these catalysts that I am producing, they are mainly more suitable for small scale localized plants and powered by um, natural sources such as wind energy. So this alone satisfies three United Nations sustainable goals. Goal seven, affordable and clean energy. Goal nine, industry innovation infrastructure. And finally, goal 13, climate action. Now, to conclude, of course, the Haber-Bosch process um, occurred at a point where fossil fuels were the only source of energy. But as you know, we're currently now in 2022. And as time has been going on, there's been more modern technologies being developed. And of course, us, we have become more wiser to the fact that um, fossil fuels aren't the only energy source. We've got other energy sources such as water, sunlight, in order to make a more green or sustainable industrial process such as the Haber-Bosch process. Now, it can be of course, we, we can um, optimize this process, the Haber-Bosch process, which has been an amazing and fantastic process that has been feeding the world for over 100 years, but we can make it into a more greener way in order to reduce carbon emissions using less feedstock resources. Now, when we try to look at new routes, of course, we're looking at feasible technologies that will help decrease carbon dioxide emissions and contribute to less climate change. So this should be explored. And of course, it is currently being explored um, all throughout the world by scientists who are trying to look for um, greener ways to produce ammonia. Now, any improvement, of course, for towards the Haber-Bosch process is greatly welcome as it will produce 
great benefits economically and also environmentally as we are trying to reduce the drastic effects of climate change. Now, for my work, I've received numer numerous awards and global recognition for my research, and I plan to develop more in the near future. I'm currently a lecturer, so I'm mainly focused on teaching and scholarship. So I plan to go more into a research area in the near future um, in order to develop this research into something that can actually be applied at a small scale, for small scale ammonia production. Um, Therefore, I would first of all thank you for listening. And if you would like to contact me um, for any research opportunities or funding opportunities, or if you would like to have a chat about my work, then you can contact me on LinkedIn. So I go by the handle of Dr. Yalanupoya Gao and Twitter. My Twitter handle is at Yalanupoya Gao. So you can contact me and we can discuss this further or if there are any other things that you'd like to ask, then you are most welcome. Thank you everyone for listening. Thank you to our speaker for her interesting talk. Please note again that this is not a live recording and we couldn't do a Q&A session. So please leave your questions in the comments or email us. This is also the third video in the IYCN Science Cafe series. Past videos are available on our YouTube channel. The IYCN has done a series of workshops on professional development skills with inspirational and distinguished guest speakers. Many topics have been covered, such as scientific writing and publishing, building a successful presence online, and non-traditional career paths for chemists. These videos can be viewed for free on YouTube under the IUPAC YouTube channel. The IUPAC announced the top 10 emerging technologies in chemistry for 2022. Some of these technologies include sodium batteries, textile displays, and solar fuels. We are running another survey on which topics from the top 10 emerging technologies you would like to hear about. Uh, please fill in the survey before the 15th of March by using the QR code or link. Thank you to the speaker and the audience. Please leave any questions in the comments or email us at conferencepresence.iycn at gmail.com. Follow us on all social media or our website to keep up to date with future events. Please also consider becoming an IYCN member if you have not, as it is free. Thank you.